I have a Behringer X-Touch Mini MIDI controller that I wanted to use with Capture One. However, the knobs on this controller are absolute instead of relative, which perhaps made the Bohm MIDI translator not ideal to use. So instead, I used my favorite program, Auto Hotkey, uh, to modify a script that originally came from this link and then was modified by Rudy B24. Uh, so many thanks to both of them for doing all of the heavy lifting. My latest version can be downloaded on GitHub with the link below in the description. Okay, so here is an example of uh, what we can do with this script. So if, for example, we wanted to adjust exposure, what we could do is we could use the first knob here. And if I rotate it uh, clockwise, uh, it'll increase the exposure. And if I rotate it counterclockwise, it'll decrease the exposure. Uh, and same principle for white balance. So a little more yellow going clockwise, a little more blue going counterclockwise. And uh, tint would be the same for uh, button number three for the third knob. Uh, so more magenta clockwise and more green counterclockwise. In order to download Auto Hotkey, what we're going to do is just Google Auto Hotkey and then click on the link. And then once we're at the home page, uh, just click download. And then we're going to download version 2. And once that's downloaded, I'm just going to click on the exe file and then run it. and install it. I'm not going to bother installing because I already have the auto hotkey on my computer. So from the GitHub website, uh, what we can do is we can go to code and then uh, download the zip file. And uh, what we can do is uh, we can copy this folder and uh, place it wherever we want to have it reside. Once we have uh, this zip file extracted, what we need to do is put the xtouch uh, XML file uh, into the proper Capture One directory. So what we can do is open up a new tab here, and I'm just going to copy and paste this particular directory, which is the Capture One keyboard shortcuts directory for Windows 10. Uh, so if I copy this, and then I put it in my Windows Explorer, uh, it'll take me to uh, the directory that the keyboard shortcuts are placed for Capture One. Uh, I already have this xtouch XML file here, but uh, when first starting, what you would do is just copy it and, and then paste it uh, to this uh, directory. Next, go into Capture One and then under Edit Keyboard Shortcuts, we would set the directory to the xtouch custom profile if you want to use my keyboard shortcuts if you want to make your own that's totally fine and reassign the keys as you see fit so what we're going to do double click on the ahk file and what it's first time it runs it's going to say select midi ports and we just click ok uh, it says launch MIDI port selection and it says empty, but that's fine. We just click OK again. And then we're going to find the XTouch Mini. So then we click on XTouch Mini and then the done and reload icon. And then the mini monitor shows up. Now, now this will only show up on the first time uh, after the first time. Uh, we won't get those prompts, but the mini monitor will be the only thing that shows up. The reason the prompts don't come up again is that a .ini file is created that will contain all the settings for the future. So what we can do is we use the MIDI monitor to see which are the values for data 1 and data 2 so that we can uh, then program it into our AHK script. So let's look at one example where we might uh, uh, reassign saturation to uh, knob number six. So this one here, what we would do is I, I would turn number six 
and we would see on the MIDI monitor that it, data one equals six and then data two is uh, wherever it is on the location. And then what we would do is we would go into capture one. Okay, and so, and then I would go into uh, edit keyboard shortcuts and then find out what is the value for saturation. Saturation is plus two. Uh, is control alt add and then saturation minus two is control alt subtract okay uh, so then i know that those are the hotkeys that i would need to do uh, so now i've already set it up in auto hotkey so we already know that data one equals six and then so uh, so these lines don't need to be changed this one this one or this one uh, but we do need the auto hotkey uh, keys. So I already know some of the shortcuts for auto hotkey. So control happens to be the hat and then alt happens to be the uh, exclamation mark. And to get the add, I suspect it's going to be numpad add. Okay. So just going to go down here and this will be so control add, numpad add, okay. All right, so then if we copy this and then bring this down here, numpad. If we do not know the syntax, what we can do is go into the auto hotkey website at this link, uh, which will pull up this page. And then what we can do is search down to find what the syntax would be for a particular key. Or what we can do is find it using control F. And then in this case, we can see that the for numpad subtraction, it's numpad sub. And then change this to sub. And then change this to sub as well. Okay. Control S to save it. Okay. And then, of course, we come down here to reload the script. And then we'll check it out in Capture One. Okay, so we'll close this. And we're going to see if this saturation slider moves when I move number six. Okay, so if I'm turning it clockwise, it does move that way. And if I turn it counterclockwise, it moves down that way. So that's how we programmed saturation for number six. Okay. And of course you can uh, program it uh, however you like. This is how I've chosen to do it, but you guys probably have way better workflows than I do. For each knob, there are three if statements. So in the first if statement, we are looking at the case where the knob is being turned clockwise when data two has a value of between one and 127 or past 127. In the second if statement, what we are looking at is if the knob is being turned counterclockwise and the data two value is not zero. And in the third if statement, what we are looking at is if the knob is being turned counterclockwise and data two is turned all the way off. So it's uh, completely to the left and has a value of zero. When it came to programming white balance, what I found with respect to the keyboard shortcuts is uh, when we look at the default uh, keys for white balance, it was uh, here it says, so for example, the white balance minus 50 kelvins was shift subtract. And that didn't seem to work for myself. Maybe there were collisions with other programs that I was running. But in any case, so when I uh, remapped with my own uh, X-Touch remapping, I remapped it to control shift multiply. And so when we look on the script here, so uh, this would be the control shift multiply for these two if statements here and then going back to capture one when i close this and then i move the knob here going back and forth the control shift multiply as well as the shift add both work to change the white balance
Please note that I am neither a programmer nor a photographer, so at present I have not assigned knobs to the second row, which can be done with this MIDI controller by toggling to B. Uh, but at some point as I get more familiar with Capture One and a little more familiar with editing, I will probably add to the current script. When adding a second row, uh, data one will have a value of 11 instead of one. So as you can see, I'm on the A row here, but if I switch over to the B row, right? Uh, and then I look at my MIDI monitor, when I try and turn the knob here, you could see that the data one, so if I'm turning knob number one clockwise, data one it has a value of 11 and data two has the value from zero to 127, right? And then knob two, it data one will be 12 and so on and so forth so it starts at 11. now so if we switch back to the a layer here and then we move knob one data one goes back to number one right and then knob two is two three so on and so forth thanks very much for watching this video.